The date is Friday, November the 6th, 2015. The location is the Yankee Air Museum, Belleville, Michigan. The time is 11 a.m. The person being interviewed today is James Haynes. James was born on July the 3rd, 1925, and he served in the Navy during World War II. The interview will be conducted by Dan Mihal. This interview is being brought to you by the generosity of the Ford Motor Company and is being conducted on behalf of the Oral History Department at the Yankee Air Museum in Belleville, Michigan. Also present today are James's son-in-law, James Favio, and the videographer, Jerry Jessen. Good morning, James. How are you today? Good morning. Um, James, can you tell us where you were born? Where, you, where were you? Ashland, West Virginia. And did you grow up in Ashland? For about four or five years. And then where did you go from there? Went to Majestic, Kentucky. Can you tell us what your parents' names were? Yes. Pardon? Your parents' names? Ida Danford Hines and Robert Newton Hines. Did you have any brothers and sisters? Yes, I had one sister and four brothers. What, were your sis what was your sister's name? Georgia Francis. And, and what were your brother's names? It's me, Ivan, Robert, and Larry. Okay. Did you attend school in Majestic, Kentucky then? Yes, I did. All the way through high school? No, the high school was at Phelps, but I only had two years of high school, and I went in the service. Okay. So you would have graduated from high school in 1943 then? I think so. Do you have any memories of growing up in Majestic, what it was like in the town? Yeah, it was nice. It wasn't many people, but... So you were drafted in 1943? Yes. I received the notice on my birthday. <laughs> and you were drafted into the Navy, or did they give you a choice of the service that you could go into? I was drafted in the Navy. So they didn't give you much of a choice? <laughs> no, he didn't. And when you entered the Navy, where did you go first? Great Lakes. And that was for boot camp? Yes. Do you remember how long you were at Great Lakes? No, it's about, I don't recall. About maybe a month or so? I was thinking maybe a month. Okay. Do you have any memories of Great Lakes, such as the living conditions or the food? Or no, it, it wasn't wintertime. That was good. That's good. It gets pretty cold at Great Lakes, I hear. It does. And you probably weren't used to that living in, down in Kentucky. No, I don't know. It got pretty cold sometimes. Okay. Did you receive any specialized training at Great Lakes, like gunnery or? No. Okay. Just general. <laughs> General things. And after you, after Great Lakes, where did you go? I went to Galveston, Texas, where I picked up our DE. Okay, that's that's a destroyer escort. Yes. Okay, and that was the Gunnison. Is that the correct? Gunnison, yes. So the ship was built in Texas. Do you think? Pardon? Was the ship built in Texas? Yes, it was. Um, so when you got on board the ship, did you have your own bunk or did you have to share bunks with another crewmate? I'm not sure. I'm not sure of the question. Well, did, did, did they have enough bunks for everyone on the crew or did you, or when you were, did you sleep in somebody else's bed when they took? Oh, no. No? No, everybody had a place. Okay. And what were your duties aboard the Gunnison? As a gunner, a sight setter. A sight setter? Yes, for a three-inch gun. Okay, one of the three-inch guns. How many gun, three-inch guns did the Gunnison have? Three. Okay. Was there more than one crew for each gun? There's about three or four 
on one gun. Okay. So you you the, you took turns manning the gun then with these other uh, people. Each one had a had a steady job. Okay. Now, did you have drills where you practiced using the guns? Yes, I did. Okay. We went, went out to sea and shot targets. So there was a, I mean, what, what were you shooting at? Was it a target that was being towed? Yes, being towed. And then they told you if you hit it or not and things like that? Yes. Were these drills surprise drills or were they scheduled? They scheduled as far as I know. And from Texas, where did you go next? We went to Virginia and picked up ammunition and stuff. And then did you um, go and do escort duty then after that, after you picked up the ammunition? Well, yes, we went up to Boston. Okay, to Boston. And from Boston, we went to uh, uh, that place out from Virginia. I don't recall the name of it. Is it down in the Caribbean? Yeah, it was. It was. Um, Is that the Bahamas? Bah it was before the Bahamas. It's up across from Virginia. It, I don't recall the name of it. So then you, um, after Virginia then, then you went to the Bahamas and you escorted convoys across the Atlantic? Yes, we did. Do you remember about how many convoys uh, you were, you escorted across the Atlantic? Yes, we did, did have. How many times did you cross the Atlantic, do you remember? I think it was three or four. So um, your ship, the Gunnison, was one of the several destroyer escorts that would escort a convoy. Is that the way it worked? Yes, it was. Do you remember how long it took to cro for the convoy to cross the Atlantic about? Well, it was slow speed. It was weeks, I think. <laughs> it was, uh, they were pretty slow convoys, weren't they? Real slow. <laughs> would, would you remember how fast they went or about? It like it was Oh, four, oh, four miles or something. Four knots? Yeah. So uh, that'd probably be almost 30 days to get across at four knots or so. Yes. A month or so. So when, you, when the convoy was, was sailing, were the, how were the destroyer escorts um, positioned in the convoy? Were they around the outside of it? They're around the front and both sides. Now, did the convoy uh, sail a zigzag course where they changed? Yes, they did. They did zigzag to uh, miss the uh, submarines. Make it tougher for the submarines yeah. to shoot at them, huh? Did you encounter any submarines when you were escorting convoys? Not, not close. Did you, were any ships sunk out of the convoys you escorted? Yes, they were. There was some sunk. I don't recall how many, but they were some sunk. Was that, did you, did you lose a ship every time, on every convoy then? Was there a ship sunk on every time you crossed? Uh, no, not every time. So if, if uh, a submarine was encountered, did your ship go out and attempt to depth charge the submarine? Tried to. Tried to? Do you know if you actually sunk any submarines? No, we didn't actually sink any. So when you were um, going after a submarine, how, how did that work? Did you, do, did you go out in teams? Did the escorts go out in teams? To yes, they did. About how many ships were in a convoy? Do you have any recollection? I don't know, recall how many. It must have been quite a Good few. Good group of them, though. Maybe 50 or 60? Is that? I'd say so. 
And, and the merchant ships that you were escorting, were those Liberty ships? Yes, they were. They those all, were the, the old they slow. Liberty ship. <laughs> now the Atlantic can get pretty rough, the weather can get pretty rough, and your ship was fairly small. The Gunnison was a small ship. Did it rock a lot in rough water? Yeah, it rolled around quite a bit. Did you, I, okay, go ahead. Slashed around quite a bit. Now, I, I, I was a roommate with, a, with a, a fellow, and he was on a destroyer much later than you, yeah. and he told me that they actually had belts on their bunks. Did you have something to hold you in? I don't really, no, I don't recall it. And he said they actually had a belt, like a seat belt, to keep them belted in, because oh. it would roll so much that you'd roll out of your bunk. Did your um, crew fire your three-inch gun at a submarine during a convoy? Did, what was the, did, you, did you actually fire your gun at a submarine? No, may, may have, but I don't recall. You usually use depth charge for submarine. Okay, now you escorted, like you said, maybe three convoys. What are the places that you went to besides England? Oh, it seemed like it's some places in the Bahamas. Okay. I don't recall where. <clears throat> Did you, any places on the other side of the Atlantic? Yes, the Pacific. Okay, but in, in, before you went to the Pacific, did you sail to like Africa? Yeah, yes, went to Africa a couple of times. And then that, then you changed theaters of operation and went to the Pacific after? Yes, went to the Panama Canal. Do you remember what year that was when you went through? It should be 44. So you went through the Panama Canal. That must have been interesting. Yeah, it was. Can, was you, that interesting? can you describe what it was like going through the canal? Or? Well, you just go down. Way down, they bring it up to water, and then they bring it, bring up the other side. Was it? Uh, it was probably pretty hot down there, wasn't it? Yeah, it's pretty warm. Well, you got a free trip to the canal. People nowadays pay money to go down yeah. there. Right? <laughs> Do you remember how long it took you to go through the canal? No, I don't. And after you crossed through the canal, where did you go? Went to Hawaii. Did you get leave while you were in Hawaii? No, I didn't get leave in Hawaii. I'd like to. <laughs> would have been nice, right? Yeah, it would, it would have. And after Hawaii, what did your ship do? Uh, I don't recall the name of the place. You were, were you patrolling or patrolling for Japanese submarines or? We, no, we were mainly headed west, headed west to join in patrol out there. So when you were on patrol, were you were the guns constantly being manned, or were, did you only man the guns when you got battle stations? Just, just uh, man the guns when there's a general, general. General quarters? Yes. Did you encounter any Japanese submarines on your patrols? We've dropped depth charges at few times, but we didn't encounter them. Now you had a, a diary that you maintained, and it had a, a list of the itinerary of all the places you stopped, and some of the island chains that were listed were the Society Islands and the Admiralty Islands. Is that, does that ring a bell? I don't ring those. Now, when you were crossing the Pacific, when you crossed the equator, you participated in a ceremony for as a first time, as a sailor, the first time you crossed the equator, um, where um, you, you were hazed. If 
by the... By the yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were hit with rubber hoses and different things. In fact, you had a picture of your, you that you were crawling on the deck and... Uh, yeah. So you would have... I think the, the term they use for the first time people is that you were a polywog. Is that... Do you remember that name? No. No, no. But you had King Neptune there and everybody dresses up and... Do you, you remember that? Yes, I do. It was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> And then you went to the Philippines after that? Yes, we did. Okay, and what we did you go did ahead. a lot of patrolling around the Philippines. Okay, were you escorting convoys too? We didn't uh, do much escorting, but we, we did do some. Now, you, so you made it, once you got to the Philippines, you didn't really go back to Hawaii again, or did you? No, we didn't. So you mainly just patrolled in that area. Right. And were you at sea when Germany surrendered? I was what? Were you at sea? Were you uh, on board the Gunnison when Germany surrendered? Uh, no, I was awake. I rem remember that. Yeah. I was, we were celebrated. You did? <laughs> yeah. So they let you celebrate on board the ship? Yeah. We celebrated more when Japan surrendered. Yes, I imagine. And what did your ship do after you patrolled in the Philippines? After, after we, we had to west again or east. Do you remember where you went east? No, no. Now, did you then uh, at some point sail up north to Okinawa? Yeah. Yeah, Okinawa. Yeah, that was, that was a bad area we were in that. Okay. On the outskirts, trying to get the bigger ship, so they left us alone. So you were like uh, uh, on picket duty on the outside of the, all the ships? Right. Now that was, did you encounter any kamikazes in those raids or? Yes, we did, but not on our ship. Like I said, <clears throat> they were looking for bigger ships. Did your uh, anti-aircraft guns then try to engage the planes? Yes, they were. And there were a lot of ships at, o at Okinawa, right? Correct? There were a lot of ships. Thousands, that right? Was, that was the convoy for taking Japan. Okay. Uh, so when your ship was on picket duty, were then you using your radar to warn the bigger ships that the, the, these air raids were coming? I, I don't recall that. And um, af, af, you, after you left uh, Okinawa, when did, where did you go? Went to Japan. So that was after the surrender then? After surrender. Did you escort ships to Japan then? We escorted some. Do you remember what kind of ships they were? No, I don't. So when you got to Japan, there must have been even more ships there. Yeah, there was a lot of ships. you have any guess as to how many? Do you no, remember? No, I, I wouldn't guess. And then when you got to Japan, what was your ship assigned to do? Patrol outside, protect the carriers. Do you remember how long you were in Japan about? I don't recall how long. 
And so then after that period of time then, did, you, did the ship return to the U.S.? Yes, it did. And, and where, did you, where did you land? I wound up in San Diego for a couple of months. Okay. Then I was come back and was discharged. Did they uh, offer to keep to offer to let you stay on if you wanted to re-enlist? Did they ask you to re-enlist? Yes, they did. And you I said I didn't want to re re-enlist. <laughs> You'd had enough of the Navy. Yeah, I'd had enough. <laughs> you know, I find it's kind of interesting that somebody from in, in the interior of the United States, Kentucky, ended up in the Navy of all places, right? You ended up, in, you probably never saw a big lake until you got it to the Navy. Oh. <laughs> so then um, after, after you um, decided not to re-enlist and they discharged you, how did you get home from California? We, trains and planes and everything were all booked up and we hired a taxi from San Diego to Cincinnati was four, 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 four plus me and we did it from San Diego for, to Cincinnati for what we would pay on the bus, which was really nice. We give, we give the driver, cab driver a few extra bucks on it. And he, he picked up his grandmother and took her out west. <laughs> That's interesting. So that was his motivation to drive all the way to Cincinnati. How long did that take? Do you remember? I don't, don't recall. It's maybe a couple of, couple of days. Drove, drove around the clock because some of the, there's a couple of them that could drive. So the cab driver wasn't the only one driving? Right. And they drove around the clock. And then from Cincinnati, how did you get back to Majestic? Back to uh, uh, Cincinnati, I got the road. Okay, how, but how did you get from Cincinnati to Majestic? Oh, from N and W Railroad. Okay, you took you took a train. I took a train. Did any of your brothers or sisters serve in the military? Yes, my brother did. He was on the. <coughs> he was third, third one on the beach, <laughs> and. Uh, the sister, she didn't serve in, in the Navy, but I had a brother, Robert, he, he was in service, and Ivan was in service. Were they both in the Army? Yeah. Yes, Damon was in the Army. And, and Damon was the one that, were, that crossed over Normandy Beach? Right. Was he, he was he involved in any battles once uh, once he got to Europe? Yeah, he got, had some silver stars and stuff, some medal. Was he in the Battle of the Bulge? He was in the battle, yes. And when you got back home to Majestic, uh, what did you do? <coughs> Went to work at Coal Company. What was the name of the company? Majestic Collars. Majestic Collars. And and how long did you stay in Majestic after you got back? Oh, couple, couple of years. And where did you go um, from Majestic? Where did you move to? To Virginia, Martinsville, Virginia. Martinsville. Yes. Did you get married after the war? Yes, I did. Do you remember what year that was? It was 51, 1953. 53? 
1951, I think. 1951, yeah. okay. And, and where did you get married? Martinville, Virginia, okay. at a Baptist church. What were, what's your wife's name? It's Pe Peggy Ann Reynolds Haynes. And what did you do after you got married? Did you go to work for? I was already working in Virginia, so I just stayed in Virginia. Who did you work for? It's some light place. I don't recall the name. Did you work for an oil company? I did oil company too. What was the oil company? Pure oil. Company. Pure oil. I remember pure oil. Yeah. They had the white and blue circles. Right. Yeah, yeah, they did. And and how long did you work for Pure Oil? About do you remember? Maybe two years. We came to Michigan. And and did, how many children do you have? I have four. How many girls and how many? Six. Six? Six children. How many girls? You, for us or my mother and dad. No, no, for you. Of four children. How many girls and how many boys? One, one boy and three girls. Can you tell me what their names are? Pardon? Their names? Pamela, Madonna, Haynes, Brenda Sue, Haynes, Tekleski, Jim Haynes. He's a, not, not a junior, but just, uh, and then Cynthia Ann Haynes. And did you raise your children in Michigan? Yes, we did. Are your, your children, are they all still in Michigan or did some move away? One, one moved, moved away. Where, where to? Arizona. Is that your he son? Was, he went in the service and came back out. He, he stayed in Arizona. Okay, and what, like in the Phoenix area or something? He became a postman and was a postman. And when you got to Michigan, where, who did you go to work for? Uh, uh, aircraft place. They would build airplanes. It will run. Okay. And right here. So I was after the war, and they were building peace planes then. Okay. So right at the Willow Run factory. Uh, yeah. No, it was a place that was. Uh, out, out, away from the factories. Okay. There was a subcontractor. Okay. And then after that, who did you work for? McLeod Steel. Downriver in Trenton? Is that where they are? Uh, Trenton, yes. And what was your job working for McLeod? Timekeeper and payroll clerk. Is that what you trained for? Did you go to school for that after the war? I just went to school for being an accountant. And that was what you did for McClough, you were an accountant? Yes. And how long did you work for McClough? Do you remember about? 33 years, I think it was. Wow, wow. And you, did you retire from McClough then? Yes, I did. But they're out of business now. Yes, I, yeah. Um, as you think back to your time in the service and in the war, is there any thoughts that you'd like to pass on to the generations that are coming up now? Any, any experiences or? Just, just, just hang in there. Well, thank you for your time, James. I appreciate it. I enjoyed this a lot. Yes, thank you.